Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. The show will start in a couple minutes. I'm still having the same lighting issue as we had yesterday, but that's okay because the store looks good. Yes, Ralph, there's my dog. But the store looks good. We brought in about $10,000 worth of inventory, painted the shelves, things look good. But I do need a couple more minutes before we start the show because I haven't started smoking cannabis yet. I already got my coffee, had my breakfast, my little gluten-free muffin. We'll start the show a little early. And by start the show, I mean I'm going to sit here and smoke cannabis for a few more minutes. That's what I mean by start the show. Like that. That's what I mean. I'm going to start the show by smoking cannabis. I got my mic on. The stream is going. We got lips are moving, but nothing is coming out. Thank you, Crunchy. Can't hear you. I think we got the sound now. Strangle the mic again. Oh, I remember that. I bought a new mic. I strangled the mic. I damaged it. Okay, you should be getting mic now. Now we can hear you. All right. Woo, ahoy, matey mate. Ah, we got people from all over. The Canary Islands, Florida. Let's see, where do we get people from? Oh, don't touch your eye. Thank you so much for the advice because... I grind up the cannabis and then I touch my eye. Uh, no microphone, no mic, blah. My state promotes the activity. No voice, no mic. Grow boss. Mic check. No sound, just the mic. Check, check. All right, I got the mic. I should be streaming. We should be good now. Oh, my God. So much to do. So many factors to consider. Running a show is like growing cannabis. It's so easy. You see people do it. It looks so easy. Phoenix, Canada. Looks so easy. All you gotta do is get a phone, start uploading. Oh yeah, so easy. Fortunately, this show is powered by cannabis. So the supply never runs out. San Marcos. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's Canada, Ontario. It was 108 yesterday in the desert. Listen, I live in the desert too, man. And it was like 114 here. And the Bushmaster was growing cannabis in the desert in these temperatures last year. What's today's topic? <laughs> you assume... Josh, you assume that this is a coordinated effort. That I've been scripting this. That I have planned it all week. Mostly what I'm going to do is just remind you that you can buy this Blue Lab meter from me here at the store. It's literally less than a month old. For $125. Bucks. And this Hannah meter right here that I showed you on the show yesterday. You can get this for $90. Bucks. Come into the store. I'm going to start using my show maybe to get rid of some of this used equipment we got going on in the store. And this Blue Lab meter has the pH attachment too that goes right here. It's in a box over on the shelf. And when I say shelf, I mean look at my store, Ralph. He's a good dog. Look at that. We got so much stuff. Oh, we brought in pallets worth of stuff, like 10 G's worth of stuff. To fill up the shelves in the store because i was running the store at the minimum like the minimum you needed to grow cannabis which is fine like people would come in and i'd be like hey you don't really need all that shit. if you're just growing for yourself this is what you need like get yourself a couple of uh 
Get yourself a couple of these T5 lights that are right there on the right side of your screen. And then, you know what? People are like stopping in my store from all over the country because I'm in Vegas. So they come and they visit the store because they're already in Vegas. And like they're coming in my store and you can see their face when they come in. They're like, which eye do I stare at? The good one or the lazy eye? Like I had a vendor come in my store a couple months ago and he was just like, you know, expected a little more from the Grow Boss store. And, you know, I was like, oh, I took it to heart. But, you know, as the weeks went by, I sort of let it slip off my mind. Um, yeah, yeah, call me Xenon. Xeon Steel. Xeon Steel. Call me. I know the puppy is so adorable. PH isn't real. PH is real. It's just worthless. Oh, David Williams. Which Mars Hydro did I buy for the store? Check this out. Yes. Okay, so those were the Mars Hydro lights that I bought for the store. Not bad. Um, not bad. So I, I got a couple of those. I just bought them off eBay. I bought them off the Mars Hydro account from eBay. And then, uh, and then from there, I'll just sell them in the store and I'll get an account with Mars Hydro and then we'll start selling them in the store. So I bought the, uh, let's see. Let's see if I can show you. I bought. Give me one sec. Okay, so I went Mars Hydro. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can find uh, Mars. Switch. I since since I switched using the keystrokes to quit. Uh, cutting off the stream and my mic and and everything else uh the web has been freezing on me so here's mars hydro so i bought a couple of these i bought a couple of 300s i bought a couple 600s i bought a three lamp like this and it seems to make sense to me look if you're going to like a three by three space i mean you buy one of these for veg and you buy two for flour and a four by four that's not bad i mean i bought a bunch of these 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 single green ones right here I bought a bunch of those. I sell them for 125 in the store. Could you buy them for 104 here? Hell yeah, I bought them for 104. I'll sell them for 125 in the store just because I'm gonna make 25% of my money, which is not an average, and not an average investment for a store. 25% is what you make off this nonsense blue lab meter. I mean, that's hard for a store to stay in, you know, business at 25%. You gotta sell a lot of shit. So I bought a couple of two pieces. I bought some ones, twos. I also bought, I bought some twos because you veg with a one, you flower with a two, you veg with a two and you flower with a four panel. So I bought a couple of <clears throat> like this one right here. I bought a couple four panels for a four by four. So I bought a one and the three twos and four panels and you know, they're inexpensive. And for as much as, uh, for as much as I, I, I make fun of LEDs and I say they have a 100% failure rate. A lot of my argument comes from the fact of their expense. I mean, this light right here, it says it's full spectrum and it's 960 watts. It's not, it's like 400 watts. And then when we look at like, but it was, you know, they're like 350 bucks. And then when we look at like this shit, for the equivalent, um, we'll look up the K3 600 watt, which is 450 watts. We look up the equivalent. K3 600. We look up the equivalent and it's, oh, and don't let this, don't let this add the, these fucks. So Lamposh Alpha, full spectrum LED grow light, K3 L600 OEM. You know what that means? That means that this is the manufacturer that packages it and sells it to Kind LED. 
and then they sell it themselves. So Kind LED goes to China, Cambodia, Thailand, Mexico, wherever it is Kind LED goes. And then, just like everyone else, because there's a street called XYZ Gangzhou Street. And if you walk down the street on the left side, like there'll be a factory, and that factory will make all the stuff like uh, like light hangers and trellis netting. And then you go to the next factory. And the next factory will be all the LED makers. And you go to the next factory, and that'll be like the bulb and ballast manufacturer. It's just a street in China that just erupts noxious fumes, poisons their air, and produces this shit, which we love. And I'm not knocking the system. As the United States, I think it's fantastic that we allow other countries to wreck their environment for our personal gain and desires. Fuck it, let the world burn. I'd rather live five years in a zombie world than another 40 like this. Hell yeah, zombies. So here it is for 539. The Mars LED equivalent's about 400 bucks. But this is the knockoff. So when we look at the kind, at, we just, we'll just click this one. When we look at this one, we choose the one we want. $900 versus $400. And a lot of the stuff that I do when I draw you pictures and I explain to you about LEDs and the relationship between them comes down to cost. This light costs $900. You could buy a lot of light for $900. All I'm saying is you could buy, if you look here at those T5s right there, those T5s are 200 cash, 350 for a four foot four bulb and a four foot eight bulb at my store. That's 350. You buy two tents for another 200 bucks, you're at 550. You buy the bags of soil, the nutrients and everything else, you're at 850, let's say, 300 bucks. You buy a meter that like this blue lab right here for 125 bucks cash, three months old, less than one month old. Yeah, ah, yeah. So, or that Hannah one for 90 bucks. Yeah, by the time you get through all that, you're 850 bucks. But let's be clear, for 850 bucks, you could buy your entire grow, two, two, two tents, fan filter, everything, lights and everything, versus this one light. And then remember, you still have to buy the veg light. So once you're done with this one, you have to buy the veg light. So there's another 750. Even if you cheaped out and bought 600, you're at 1500 bucks for the two lights. Great LEDs. But again, here is the manufacturer that makes their great LED for hundreds. It was $895 versus $539. Now, if we continue to work backward, if this vendor is making, let's say I'm making 25% off of something. If they're making 25%, um, let's see, it'd be $450, bucks, 25 percent would be $112. So they're making, it costs them $450 to make this light. If it costs this manufacturer 450 to make this light and Kind LED is buying, is selling them for 900, then we know there's a huge profit margin in there. 607, you're on at the Grow Boss. What am I doing wrong? Uh, hi, this is John calling from New York. How are you doing today, boss? John, good morning. Hey, yes. I hardly ever call, but I, I really have a burning question. I've been watching your show for a little while and I noticed you don't talk a whole lot about using cocoa. I know you have a video that basically says, you know, cocoa's media, treat it like soil, et cetera, et cetera. But I've been using it for about seven or eight runs now, uh, recycling at times, uh, uh, using new at times, and I've been using the same cocoa. Um, but I noticed it does give me different results uh, and is a little different to control or to let go than using soil did in my first couple of runs. How is so? Is there any way you could uh, build up? Um, I noticed that if I follow your method of, like, you know, feeding by PPMs, feeding appropriately, underfeeding, not feeding on a thousand watt, I use a 600 watt <coughs> flour. So I'm not feeding on the bottle's recommendations, and I underfeed a little bit. But I noticed that um, my um, like little deficiencies, uh, especially magnesium uh, and, and also calcium, uh, tends to pop up like between waterings. And with soil, I was doing like a water 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 feed, water, water, you know, kind of as necessary. Well, I found with the cocoa, I'm ending up having to use a little more nutrients to stay on top of things. Not feeding them more for feeding, but feeding more often. Almost like water <coughs> feed, water feed, water feed. Um, and I know at one point in time, you had said something about not, you know, watering to it's like runoff with cocoa. 
So I was wondering if there's any more information I saw in the chat here. You know, the last few weeks, people have been asking a little bit or bringing it up at the top of the conversation that obviously some people out there are using Coco now that weren't before. And um, <coughs> just want to know if you have any, like, I don't know, wisdom on the fact or, you know, all okay. general practices. People always talk about it being buffered or needing more calcium or amended or, you know, I run a, I run hydrozyme through it uh, when I give it its final flush and then again to wash it. Um, and with uh, with Calmac, uh, but I was wondering if there's anything else you could add to that. And I'll take this. Uh, I'll take the answer off, off off the phone. Thanks. Okay. Yes, sir. I appreciate the call. Thank you. Let me see. Is this what I need here? A one, a two, a three gallon bucket. I'll I'll explain to you. Okay. I think this is what I need for now. Okay. Check check. All right. Got my mic. Got. I'm not. <clears throat> Coco doesn't hold newts. Okay. <clears throat> so, three buckets. <clears throat> the relationship between the bucket size and the plant. And I, I wanted to actually bring this up because... Uh, oh, what is this crap that you need 400 watts minimum to grow? It depends entirely on grow space and number of plants. Oh, I just wanted to thank you, Demon Worshipper, for your comment and that you watch my videos. But I just wanted you to know that you are entirely wrong and that I am entirely correct. What is this crap that you need 400 watts minimum? Okay, the plant gets bigger every week, just like in these buckets, right? We're going to transplant. As the plant outgrows this bucket, we're going to transplant it into a bigger bucket. So the plant's getting bigger, right? Okay, if photosynthesis is based on light, light, water, CO2 equals sugar and oxygen then I don't know where grow space and number of plants. See, the number of plants is irrelevant. The bigger you grow them, the fewer you need. As far as grow space, it's a limiting factor. But in terms of growing cannabis, I don't see how grow space or quantity of plants is relevant, demon worshiper. Okay. Uh. Oh, Chuck, that's funny. I, I'm waiting, I'm putting... I, Did I leave it here? Hang on a second. There was one. There was a. There was a comment. I. We had. Um, okay. Oh, there's someone that just had. That was just asking. That wanted to know about the relationship of watering and. You know, I look at the questions all week and I think that'd be great for the show. And then here I am on the show. Can't find the fucking question. Okay. So, you guys ask about transplanting, you guys ask about watering, you guys ask about nutrients, but here's the relationship between all of them. And you cannot think of these things in terms of, you cannot think of these things in terms of um, each individual factor. They must be considered in relationship to one another. For instance, you, the light's turning yellow, you've got to turn right. You know what, you and I both know what you're going to do. High RPMs, leave it in gear, break hard, turn into it, and keep it in the same gear and turn out that's one way to do it but you could be at a red light looking to turn right and have to wait till the light turns green then you do it differently in both cases you've turned right in your car and yet in both cases you're at 500 ppm and 39 4500 rpm all i'm suggesting is that both things were a right turn in your vehicle and yet we have managed to run the system entirely different ways <clears throat> So when we talk about the relationship between pot size and watering frequency and nutrients, there are many factors. For instance, all the nutrient bottles, they want you to use as much as possible. They don't even care if you kill your shit. Why? Because 85% of growers fail. So it's always about the new grower. This business is always about the new grower. Think about the warranty on cars. It's, is it service? Hell yeah, service makes money. In fact, the business may only be supplying the cars to get the service. It's not the dealership. They make $3,500 off a car. Somebody keeps that car to repairs. They've equaled that amount. So all I'm saying is that there's a relationship. And you have to understand both the end goal and the perspective of how to get to the end goal. What it should look like and how to get there. Of course, you have to gauge the motivation of the person selling you the stuff. But we're here on this show... I'm not selling you anything other than if uh, you want to uh, come in my store and buy this 
<laughs> please buy this uh, these two meters from me from Blue Lab or Hannah for 125 and 90 or of course you want to buy the grow book and equipment guide because everything I tell you on the show for free and in my videos is in my book these are my sponsors they're great they're the products you need are there other products that are similar um, not for Clonex solution not for green pad there are similar products for ducting and until you know what's in them you don't know the difference and that's why you have to know all the components for watering just like anything else so here's the relationship between watering and feeding and this is like one and um uh, how often you feed and when to transplant because i've been so busy i don't even have a bowl that fits my bomb uh, and i'm just sitting here in front of all of you and i'm literally like i'm literally like have to hold the bowl between the fingers uh, listen when i say i am my audience you and i maybe a little separation in age but you and i are the same individual <clears throat> we do way too much not enough empathy way too much effort okay <clears throat> So here's the relationship between them. Mike's on. Does anybody have any complaints, Henry? Okay. All right. So I don't care if you top feed. I don't care if you bottom feed. I don't care if you use those green caps. I don't care how the fuck you feed these buckets. Because in the scope of this, I, I just want to put this in perspective. That this process right here is... Uh, is a very very small percentage of the entire thing why because you're going to be watering a bucket for seven seconds you're literally going to be like one two three four five boom and you're out to the next one check check wait 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 um Okay, so I didn't know if somebody was telling me, they said you can't pop up, said you, we can't hear your words. So I was like, got all, because I always have that mic, that PTSD mic thing going on in my head. Oh, I'll get a, wait, come on, man, the mic's on, right? No, no, I'll get a new mic. Even if you sent me the money, it's not the cost of the mic. I appreciate the GoFundMe page. NDS, ND Salmon Squatch. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So let's close the internet. Sound is good. You're good. Newt's. Ah. Okay. Ah. Listen, I'm working on it. If I wasn't, if I wasn't fixing up my store, and I wasn't writing the book, and I wasn't dealing with the vendors, and I wasn't going to the Portland Indo Expo show, and I didn't have all those things. Listen, I've only got two more videos to go to finish for the Bushmaster, and I'm done with those high effort videos that it took me so now we can fix the store i can get it a little more i can get caught up on the stuff so i promise i'm getting really close to taking care of the details so my total apologies talk about legalization do i think texas will legalize it oh listen um defiance i'll tell you the reality of this Ow. see this is how you guys distract me in terms of legalization a texas wants the money don't think texas doesn't want the money <clears throat> and the, 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 the people of the state don't want to pay the taxes. So either they'll vote the people in government out or they'll work it out. But, okay, before we talk about the media that even goes in here, let's just talk about the watering schedule and the feeding schedule. And here's my observation. Cannabis is like sending your kids to summer camp. Every time I came back from summer camp, my parents would be like, oh my God, you got so much bigger. But I never heard that on a daily basis. Why is that? Because on a daily basis, you don't notice it. If you're in there picking leaves off your plants every day, that's not how this works. They have to get too big, you trim them back. They have to get too big, you trim them back. So you're going to literally go from a rapid rooter from Clonex, the little starter plug, 
you're going to get the Root Riot starter plug, right? You're going to take this and they're going to root just like on the picture right there. See right there? Okay. So you're going to have a solid root and then you're going to put in a red cup, but you're not going to change the light. So you're going to go from this Root Riot to a, a starter cup, a little red, you know, 16 ounce solo cup. And it's going to stay in there for two weeks. Listen, we don't do two things at once to a plant. It's a plant. We don't transplant it and do stuff to it. It's too much. It's plant, man. You know what I mean? 12 weeks to a plant is five minutes to you. So from that perspective, it's a plant. So we don't do too much. Now, we go from the root riot and then we go into a red cup. And it's going to be in the red cup. Oh, you make me work for it make me work so hard so hard i gotta get up and walk all the way over here and then come back over here Okay, you're gonna put, I'm gonna put the light over this, I'm gonna put this over the dome, right? And then I'm gonna leave my cuttings alone for weeks. I'm not gonna spray the inside. I'm not gonna go in there and check on them every day. I'm just gonna keep them someplace where there's a little bit of humidity in there. You'll use a little Mondi humidity meter, boom. You just put it right there like that and it'll tell you the humidity inside the dome. Because you got to know, you may not have to do anything about it, and there's no perfect humidity, but you got to know. And about 70%, a little dot, one little dot of humidity will show up on the dome. Okay, so it's in here for weeks, right? I mean, that light costs a dollar a month. Of all the places not to rush your world, don't rush starting your seeds. Start them a week earlier, because... If you rush this process and they don't get the roots that you want, you'll never get the results that you want. So, more root, more fruit. So, three sizes. We got them under that little light. We're going to we're gonna transplant them into a red cup. And you leave them in a red cup for two weeks. So, yeah, that's like five weeks. Think about that schedule. You got three weeks to let them root and two more in a red cup. Okay. See, the thing about a red cup is at 16 ounces... You get like, you can get like three, five, sometimes six days worth of between waterings in a red cup. So you're going to take it out of a red cup. You're going to transplant it into here. You'll fill this up. You'll fill up the next size pot. You know, you make your little sides, you drop the plant in, then you cover the whole thing up and then you just give it a watering to let it settle. Water the whole thing so it's wet. Why? Because if you do half a watering, you're going to have to water in three days. Too much watering. Too much water so you just water it can some run out the bottom sure there may not even be food in the water we haven't even discussed the feed schedule yet so in terms of this we start here and we water great it settles the earth you put some more soil on top and you're golden now from a 16 ounce to 128 ounces so if we were watering the red cup every 48 hours at 16 ounces what 16 into 128 seven seven times so if we were watering once a day just by very definition of the amount of buffer left in the media around the red cup we're going to have seven times the buffer therefore if it took one day because remember you just put the roots in the hole it's not like you put the roots in the hole and suddenly they go right to the edges so if you were watering once every two days every day you're watering every day in a red cup and you were feeding every third day let's say with clonex solution Okay, if you go in here, then now, literally, it's every seven days. So, if you, you wouldn't continue watering every three days, right? Because you have seven times the buffer. Nor would you continue feeding every three days. 
So when I say feed water, 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 feed, remember, there's a lot of things that are relative because today, if you're doing feed water, 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 feed in this, it may not work for this one because this one is two times bigger. So if you were watering once a day in this, you're gonna be watering once every three days in this. That's why you don't transplant from over. Anyway, we'll get to that in a sec. Okay. So we have the roots here and over the next two, three, four weeks, the roots are going to invade the rest of the media surrounding them. Because remember, just picture a red cup inside here. Um, you know, this may require a picture. Let's see if I can smoothly do this. Boom. Close up. Okay. Remember, if you have a red cup. Oh, yeah. No light above me. Love my studio. Red cup, 16 ounce. And you put this in a one gal pot. I mean, it's right. I mean, that's all that. And the same thing happens when you do a one gallon pot. If you put this in a five gallon pot, there are four more areas that don't have roots. So your roots look like this. And over week one, your roots invade. And over week two, they get this big. And over week three, they get this big. And then by week four, the whole thing's filled up. All I'm suggesting is that you have to account for, if you're going to transplant to this bucket, you're gonna be in a bucket for four weeks. That's why you don't start, you don't go from a 16 ounce to this. Because if you went, the plant would be this big. 98% of the light would be hitting the soil. So by definition, you would have too much light. Now, we've got this one gallon. We go from a red cup into this one gallon and we're watering once every six days. Great, four weeks later, when the plant is this big and you can't see the pot anymore, we're gonna go to a bigger pot. You're also gonna be watering every 48 hours. Now, if you're watering once a week at the beginning of this, let's say you're watering twice a week. You're gonna be, you're gonna be in this for four weeks, right? So if you're watering once in week one and the plant gets bigger, you might water twice in week two, three times in week three, and every other day in week four is four times. So you would literally water four times in week four, three times in week three, two, one in week one. That's 10 times in a month you're gonna water. If you water this pot from day one, every three days, you would be at 10 times. But that's like picking one RPM in your vehicle and driving at all speeds in it. That's like picking one light and growing your cannabis the entire time. Can you do it with a thousand watt light? Hell yes, but you have to start with your thousand light, watt light 12 feet away. You put your one gallon on the floor and eight, Four weeks later at the end of veg you transplant from a one to a three and then you go and then you finish so you've got 12 weeks and sure 12 weeks later your plants will be five feet closer but you can't put a thousand watt over a plant like uh, see what i'm saying so there are many factors that go into the nutrients because because you guys keep asking me how often to water i don't the fuck do i know some of you go some of you take the the root riot starter and you go right into a five gallon bucket. Dude, if you're four weeks in this in veg and you go to a three gallon bucket for four weeks in veg, you are an eight week old plant. One, you wouldn't go to a five, you'd go to a seven, most likely a 10, because you always try to triple. Because if you're watering every two days here, if you're gonna go into, this is a three, if you went to a five, you would be watering every what? Three days? And so four weeks from now, you'd be watering every 12 hours. So there's this relationship between the frequency of watering and the plant size in the bucket that it's in. That's why I tell you, shifting buckets, I mean, this is some real shit. I, I, listen, I don't, I, I don't care what lights you use. I don't care what nutrients you use. I don't really, I mean, these things are irrelevant to me. I find very good products and I use those in my examples. However, me telling you what size bucket you should be using and when, 
does not earn me the title of selling you shit because that's not what I do. And it's, I feel it's important that you understand that my motivation from this side of the microphone is to sell advertising to these people by getting you to watch. So I put on an interesting show. And during that, because frankly, once you watch one of these shows, if you're into growing cannabis, who isn't going to spend 20 bucks plus $6 shipping for my book, right? I mean, I've read all the books out there and I took all of their knowledge, threw it away, and then answered all the questions that come through my store because I read all the other books. And in terms of growing cannabis and what comes through my store as a hydro store, <coughs> both for indoors and out, I'm the only one that got it right because I'm at a hydro store. None of the other authors seem to have worked at a hydro store because I read all their books and it was immediately apparent that none of their books answered any of the questions that happened inside my hydro store with all of these new products and stuff I put on the shelf. So my observation here is what's my motivation? My motivation is when you come into the store, you should be able to buy shit and don't have any questions to ask. Boom, my favorite customer. So you have this one gallon bucket and you start from a red cup and you go into here. And I'm specifically, just so you know, I specifically come back to the topic and I start a few paces back and walk you forward again because you need to hear this like three, four, five times. And as long as I'm here, I might as well go over it that many times and you keep picking up pieces and you keep picking up pieces and I take a step back and move forward again and hopefully you can come along with me and that way we all arrive at the end point and we all have a similar understanding because I have never ever seen anybody else explain this and I've read all the books I met lots of store owners and I fired lots of employees and I meet a lot of growers and nobody gets this information because there are too many parts and pieces that have to play together. And frankly, all the information on the internet I found until me was wrong because I did my research just like I read the other books. Okay. So you're in a one gallon bucket. You come out of a little red solo cup and you go in here. Great. You're going to be in here for four weeks. But more importantly, when you watch those Bushmaster videos, the Bushmaster's in a one gallon. I use that as an example because I have it on film. I have, I mean, I've just, I've shown you what Bushmaster does is comes out of the red cup, goes in the one gallon. He's going to be in here for four weeks, comes out of the red cup. So puts it in here, shapes the plant the way he wants it, sets it in the room, waters it for four weeks, doesn't touch it again for four weeks. By the end of four weeks, it's being watered every day. You can see the videos and the plant's huge, right? So boom, comes out of the one, goes into a three, you add your microbes, you goes into a three, you, you add your microbes, you cover it up, you shape up the plant, you take whatever clones you want, and then it goes back into the grow room for a month, from a one to a three. And at the end of the month, <clears throat> I was of the opinion that I thought he should have went from a one to a five because they got re grows them really big because it grows like that. And you see he ended up in flower and tens because I did that light versus canopy video for you. So the bucket size is relative because if you're doing 400 watts or something like that, why are you ever going to be in a five gallon bucket? Because if you think about it, this is a one gallon will get you four weeks veg. This is a three gallon. You would, trans you would transplant into a three for four weeks more veg. But if you were flowering, you would, you would go from a one to a three. And you would just, the plant would get bigger and you would finish in this bucket. You might go from a one to a five. But if you have a, if you have like a 400 watt light, it's really small light. So you're going to get small plants. So you really wouldn't go from a one to a five. That would be like shifting from first to fifth gear. It's weird. You go, oh, well, why do I even bother a second, third or fourth, right? Even just going from second to fourth is weird. You know what I mean? Like you hop over into fourth. Even that's weird. Bleh. I mean, you got to be at the top end of second. You would have had to grow them too big in here to go from one to a five. That's all I'm saying. It, it's, it's just too big of a jump. And really what I'm talking about is one transplant every four weeks. And then only, you don't even, and not in flower. So if you have an eight week veg, I and mean, what are we talking about? A four week veg? Great. You go from a one to a three, maybe a one to a five. Either way, you've got the red cup to a one, the, one, the red cup to a one, and the one to a five. So it's two transplants. That's not too much for you, big dog. Now,
Okay. Now you go into flower. Okay, you go into flower. Great. They get bigger for the first month, and then they the buds get fatter the second. But you wouldn't really go from a one to a five unless you grew them really big in a one. That's why a six week veg is weird, and I don't usually get into a six week veg in my examples because you would probably go from a red cup to a two. Because at the end of four weeks, rather than going from a one to a two, which is like upgrading like a 14 ounce drink to a 16 ounce drink, who does that? Okay, so basically what we're talking about is three times the bucket per four weeks. Now again, let's just talk about the rate of growth. We know that in if the plant, let's say the plant gets 25% bigger every week. Uh, okay, then in week three, if it gets 25% bigger, remember, that's 25% bigger of a plant that's already got 25% bigger twice. And in week four, that's a plant that's already got 25% bigger three times. And it's compound 25% on 25% because the new growth gets 25% bigger. So suddenly, you're left with, and I, we haven't even got into the cocoa part of the media yet. And I won't take another call till I finish this because I'll lose my train of thought. So... We've got these three buckets and now we've got this thing where the plant gets bigger while it's in the bucket. So it's a scale. Now, this bucket is going to want the same water or less per watering. Because if you have one gallon of roots, where are you gonna put one gallon of media? So if you start off with this with a gallon of media and you pull it, her out four weeks from now, if you pull out a root ball that looks like this cup, where the fuck did the media go? I'll tell you where the media went. The media got dissolved. It got eroded. It got absorbed by the plant. Because you can't put a gallon of roots and a gallon of media in a one gallon bucket. It's not a compound. They're two separate gallons. See what I'm saying? So as the roots expand into the media, they, to some extent, compact the media, sure, because they push it away from the roots. But they also, absorb the nutrients and if they absorb the nutrients from the media what happens to the media it gets smaller i don't care if the media is soil or cocoa now the true difference between soil and cocoa are just a couple of things one cocoa is spongy in a way that soil isn't you take a bag of cocoa you can take the bottom bag on the palate of cocoa and squeeze it and it will be soft and spongy in a way that the top bag of soil never is. The top bag of soil on the pile is like a fucking brick. And the bottom bag of cocoa is still spongy. And that's because the cocoa fibers look like this and they can't ever lock in. They leave an enormous amount of air, much in the way that rock wool does, where they say that rock wool maintains that perfect 19 or 23 percent air water ratio i'm not if you're over watering but if you use it properly not if you water it like hydro okay so if you have more oxygen at the roots you get a bushier plant more nodes per inch because you have more oxygen at the root so the plant can support more growth that's why when you don't have the right amount of light <clears throat> You get those. See, I tell you guys, you can't grow with CFLs. And it's not that you can't grow. You can. You just, it just doesn't match the product that you're looking for that all the other buds, all the other plants get. Because if you veg with CFLs, you get this great distance between the nodes. Just like if you overwater, you get this really tight node packing on a beanstalk. That's just like the more oxygen you have at the roots, the greater the bush. Why do you think DWC culture, DWC systems work so well? Because they have a huge amount of oxygen at the roots. But I don't care if you put the roots in DWC or you do like a lid on a four by, you know, like a four by four table with a lid and you just flood the table and leave the roots in the air. Don't care. It's all the same shit at that point. So what we're talking about is a difference in density between soil and cocoa. Cocoa cannot hold as much moisture. So if you take the same size bucket, you go from a 16 ounce red cup and you put it in this bucket and you get one of these soil and one of these cocoa, the cocoa will not hold as much moisture. Why? Because it has a higher aeration ratio. However, the soil packs together densely because soil's little round shapes and it packs in there real super dense. That's why the that's why 
the soil can hold more moisture because not only does the soil hold the moisture, but the space between it doesn't allow it to run through. So you get some draining from the cocoa in a way that soil doesn't drain. Like if you've ever taken a couple of these cubes, like you know there's all those instructions and all that nonsense on how to do these cubes. Okay, so what you do, right, is you're supposed to soak these things and they sell you some solution to soak them in. And then you drain them and then you flush them again and then you add some Clonex solution to them, right? So how do you do that? You fill these things up with water, you mix up whatever concoction they say, you set the pH to whatever it is you think you, you, you think is important. And then you water them all. And then how do you drain them? Well, you stack them like this, right? So if you put five of these or six of these on top of each other in three minutes, they're all gonna be dry except for the bottom one because it wicks away the moisture and it gives you a fantastic aeration. That's the whole point of using these things, right? So you set this down on your flood table, you flood it, and it gives you a huge oxygen ratio. Now, how often you flood it, I'm not gonna get into. I know they say these things are hydro, uh, but they're not. They are, they are media. Look, I mean, it's media. Here's hydro, ready? Ah, ah, what? There's nothing in there. Why? Because hydro's water. Media is media, are you gonna see what I'm saying? So those aren't hydro. That's why you don't water them four times a day. And they get expensive if you stack them. So I don't suggest those things. And I'm not a fan of them. They're great. They grow the same cannabis as everything else grows. So if you go from a one and you fill it up with soil, you might be watering once every six days. If you fill it up with cocoa, you might be watering once every four days. So does the cocoa hold the moisture? Does the cocoa hold the moisture? Well, the cocoa doesn't hold the moisture. If the moisture holds the nutrients, then you see what I'm saying? Now, what's nutrient or salt buildup? Okay, so let's, all right, am I streaming? What, what'd I do wrong? Okay, touch the keyboard, I know that, everything's good. Okay, so if you have to water this full of cocoa every five days and for full soil every seven days, if you go from a 16 ounce cup and you put it in here, we know we have five to seven times the media that doesn't have roots. So let's say you water, <laughs> did the shit you guys tell me. I don't know which is the worst thing to pull. Okay, so you guys water till it's just 20% runoff. What the fuck? Okay, the problem with 20% runoff is you run off the water and now let's talk about what happens in the media. What happens in the media is that whatever you watered with, there's one 16 ounce space with roots. So whatever this cup absorbed last time, it's gonna absorb this time because there's no roots throughout the cup yet. I mean, throughout the bucket yet. There's only that 17 ounces worth of, uh, 16 ounces worth of uh, roots. So over the next four weeks, the roots will fill up the cup, right? All I'm saying is if you have seven times the buffer of one times the root, then if, if the plant wants 200 ppm in a 16 ounce cup, it still wants 200 ppm. If you put it in a three gallon pot, it wouldn't matter. If the plant only wants 200 ppm. So if you put 200 ppm in a one gallon pot, there are seven 16 ounce buffer zones that have 200 ppm in them. So if next week the plant wants 300 ppm, Listen, the roots are only going to grow a little bit into the space. So you literally, you have given the plants seven times the nutrients that she needs. But I want to be clear. You did not give her seven times the concentration. And that's, that is a, thank you, clones to, clones to trichomes. Thank you. That is, uh, that's what I'm talking about in this relationship because there's concentration and there's quantity. See, you could take the little plant, put it in a three, feed it 200 ppm and not feed it again. Why? Because it's got eight weeks worth of nutrients in there at 200 ppm. I mean, if this is seven times the amount, a three gallon would be 16, would be eight, 16, 23 times the amount of nutrients she wants. Not in terms of concentration, in terms of quantity in the buffer zone. 
So what we're really talking about here is the buffer zone. How big of a pot do you go in? Because if you throw light at the media, by definition, it's too much light. You have to be in the right size bucket at the right time. DWC is great, Albert. It's fantastic. I'm glad you can vouch for your brother doing it for 25 years. But like anything, there are conditions to DWC. Like anything. So DWC is great, but you, you have to know how to grow a plant before you do it, right? I mean, DWC is a high energy system. It's the fastest system. The faster the system, the greater the pro the faster the problems, the quicker the plant dies. That's all, just like a trade-off with anything else. It is all fantastic. All of it's fantastic. Look, I've got a store and a dog. I got a store full of fantastic shit. Look at that, look at all that fantastic shit, including LEDs. <laughs> look at this fantastic shit. I love all the stuff I can sell in my store. But, frankly, it's all the same shit. And it's up to the grower to use it, just like it is with NASCAR, where all the cars are the same. It's up to the driver to show us the difference. So, what we're talking about is this range of buffer zones for nutrients. Now, if the cocoa doesn't hold as much moisture and it doesn't hold as many nutrients, then yes, you're going to have to add more more often. In terms of CalMag, one of the things that get dissolved from soil is mag. And in terms of the earth, in terms of the earth's crust, 85% of the crust is mag silica nitrogen. Those are the 85% of the crust is made up of those three minerals. And what do I tell you in a healthy garden? The first one you run out of is mag. Okay, so let's just say that cal and mag are in the media and they get dissolved from the media. So you might have a slight CalMag problem with cocoa. But let's be clear. I mean a slight CalMag problem. Because if you're using RO water, like from the Ultimate RO meter, you're probably already adding CalMag. And in terms of that kind of CalMag, 781, I'm going to stay on topic, so call me back a little bit. And in terms of CalMag, you're probably going to be adding it anyway. So what are we really talking about? You're probably already adding the thing that's already going to be short no matter what system you use. And so you have to be able to recognize it and solve it. I mean, that's 1% of 1% of 1%. So even if Coco doesn't have CalMag, the fuck cares? Add some CalMag, it's a $20 bottle. It's the number one selling bottle in my store already. If you look at all the sh bottles I sell in my store, CalMag is the number one by twice the closest thing so there's this relationship where in a healthy garden they use mag right so okay so you tell me let's just say that all the haters that have talked shit about cocoa okay you're right it's got less cow mag so fucking what buy a bottle of cow mag it's 20 bucks see what i'm saying you spent five more on cocoa instead of soil so who cares get about cow mag you're gonna buy it anyway you know what i'm saying in terms of the relationship between cocoa and soil to yield, it's exactly dick. Now, it might be 1%, it might be 3%, but that is the last 3%. Think of the merger between Office Depot and Office Max. The last thing they saved on was stationary by only having to print it for one company instead of two. That was like the last thing they saved money on, right? All I'm suggesting is that things like Spectrum, listen, if you don't know the difference in buckets and watering, don't worry about Spectrum. Like, I had a guy come in here yesterday. Oh, oh it's all about Spectrum. He's Spectrum, Spectrum, Spectrum. And then bought the cheapest light possible. Didn't even care what it was. Came in here and was all over me. Spectrum, Spectrum, this and that and blah, blah, blah. And moles and par and blah, blah, blah. I was like, listen, dude, I don't know any of those things. Let me just tell you. I've got these lights at these prices. And this is what you're going to have to choose from. And he ended up doing what everybody does. They buy that light. You know, I go, I point to those those metal, those metal, uh, magnetic ballasts and I say, this is the light you shouldn't buy, but you probably will. And then I show them the T5s over here. And I say, this is the light you should buy, but probably won't because it's a little more money. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was the same thing yesterday. After I uh, yeah, ended up buying a 600-watt digital with an HPS. Absolutely just... I, at some point, there's no there's no point in educating them because you can see I like I'll give a little bit of education and then they're going to do whatever they're going to do and that's not my job. I'm not their parent. You came to the wrong store if you think I'm going to 
I'm going to not take your money. So my observation here is that if you have a four week veg, then you're going to go from, and you go into flower after four weeks, then you're going to go from a one to a three, maybe a one to a five. If you're going to do an eight week veg, you're going to go from a one at the end of, at the start of four weeks, you're going to go to a three for the next four weeks, and then you're going to go into a seven or a 10. Then what we talked about was the concentration of how often to feed it. Because when you take a plant out of a one gallon and you put it in a three gallon, there are two gallons with no roots. So you're going to get nutrients left in the two gallons with no roots. So in terms of that, you have, you, let's say you're watering this one every two days, you go to a three gallon, you're going to be watering every six days. Okay, but just understand that there are two gallons of media with no roots. So whatever you fed is already in there. So let's say your plant wants 200 ppm. <clears throat> 200 ppm the first week, 300 ppm the second, 400 ppm the third, 500 ppm the fourth. So, in fact, we'll just say 100 ppm a week, eight week veg, 800 ppm. So this will be 100 ppm, two, three, and four. So if you fed on week one, you go from a 16 ounce to this. If you fed 100 ppm, there would be seven 16 ounce buffer zones with 100 ppm left over. Okay, so in a week you water this again, right? And the, the nutrients redistribute inside the bucket. Even if you do a little bit of runoff, some of the nutrients would wash out and then the rest of the nutrients would redistribute. So, you, I mean, it's got seven times the amount. So let's say the plant wants 200. Okay, so there was 700 ppm left over. Now we're at 500. Okay, so you water now in five days. So you're halfway through week three. Okay, so you water five days now. There's 300, there's 600 ppm left. Okay, the plant wanted 300, now there's 300 ppm. Great, in week four, when you're watering every three days, you might feed 400 ppm. But also remember, those other two, the other two gallons in here also have another gallon of roots now. And then four more weeks into flower, when they finish, the thing will be full of roots and you'll have to feed more frequently. Because let's say you just feed every fourth time. If you water once, Remember during week one and you water twice in week three, two and three times in week three, you're watering 10 times in four weeks. So let's say you feed every three times. Okay, you're gonna feed this bucket three times in a month. Am I wrong? Yes, I'm wrong. It could be four, could be five, could be two. But notice I've given you two examples that are above me. I'm saying three times, four or five may be right. Why? Because I always err on the side of underfeeding. Why? Because one, very few people have thousands and all nutrients are based on thousand watt light. Two, everybody overfeeds. Nobody underfeeds. Nobody underfeeds. And if you want to know the correct amount of nutrients, you have to start by giving them too few, noticing the signs, and then adding a little. And then next time, adding a little two weeks earlier. Because today's problem started last week. So there's this relationship of light and size and how far and as the plant gets bigger, it gets closer to the light. So you're going to be in a bucket for four weeks in veg and you'll switch to the next size bucket. And then in flower, you're not going to transplant during flower. That's why it's at least three times in flower, because if you're watering once every two days, so let's say we're doing a four week veg, right? One gallon bucket. If we're watering three times a week in week four and we go to a three gallon bucket, then we're technically watering every, let's say three days in week four. If we're watering every three days in week four here, if we go to here, if we have twice the thing, it'll be every nine days. Okay, but remember, if we went from every seven days to three days in four weeks, then if we start off watering every nine days in flower, in four weeks, we're going to be watering every five days. But in flower, we don't transplant. So we have four more weeks to go. That means we're going to be watering every one day at the end of flower. That's why you don't go from a three to a seven. That's why you go from a three to a 10, because that way you'll be watering every two days at the end of flower. And that's why I always tell you, you have to start off with the end result. Because if you want to be watering every three days at the end of flower, you would have to do a 15. They don't make a 12. See what I'm saying? So this is the juggle game of how to water these buckets. Now, the PPM, 
is going to be based on separate factors like the red light in my right turn example at the start of this conversation where i said dude you could come in hot to a yellow brake hard stay in second accelerate out or you could be stopped at a red light with a no right turn on red and have to wait until the green light all i'm suggesting is that there's a relationship between buckets and it doesn't matter what light you have and it doesn't matter how many plants there are and it doesn't matter what nutrients you use and it doesn't matter what media you use because this is all centers around how often you want to water because if you're looking for a bushier plant that's shorter you have two choices you go with cocoa in a smaller bucket where you're watering more frequently which is very dangerous because what happens if you fall and can't get up what happens if your girl don't want you to leave and you can't get home and water i mean this is already a labor intensive process i'm just saying that you leave yourself open for problems when you water too frequently when you have to water too frequently so what are we talking about here if you want a bushier plant do hydro if you want it that bushy first i suggest you'd figure out just how bushy you can get them in media or cocoa because usually this is bushy enough i mean the difference between one node every 1.25 inches and one node every one inch frankly it don't really matter i mean it's just not that much of a deal to most growers why because most growers in these size buckets are growing for themselves this is not a take over the world grow you're not doing this under thousand watts oh, I mean, you're still vegging this under 1,000 watts, but I, I mean, you got an eight-week veg minimum. Like, uh, I'm just saying in two light rotations, you do a one, then a three. In a one light rotation, you might just do a two because a one light rotation is a four-week veg and a two light rotation is an eight-week veg. And a three light rotation is an eight-week veg, even though it seems like it's a four-week veg, but you still have to take the clones and put them in the root riots and start them and all those other things. I mean... Generally, veg is like a 12-week process, right? It's like three weeks worth of rooting, let's say four weeks in the root riot under the Monty Dome. Then you put them in a red cup for two weeks, right? Maybe three. Let's just say three and three. Root for three, leave them in a two and two. They root for two and then you leave them in a... I mean, that's four weeks and you haven't even started vegging yet. So then you put them in here and that's four weeks. You're at eight weeks. And that's a one light rotation. If you have a two light rotation, you're still going to start the starts and the root riots. You're still going to have to put them in a red cup for two weeks. You're at four weeks. Now you're going to veg for four and a one, transplant to a three. You've got eight week veg plus a four week start time. All I'm saying is, is there's this relationship between these buckets, the buffer, how you transplant between them. And generally, I find that the people that go that just go right into a five gallon bucket are always doing something else. The people they think they're like, oh, I'm going to just make this simple. I'm going to leave it in a five gallon bucket. And yet then they still water every day or they water a small amount every day. Even if oh, the I scratch the surface, oh, I put my finger two inches down. Oh, all of these things. There's so many things. And all I keep telling you, dude, just kick the fucking bucket. This will tell you exactly how much water is in the bucket, right? How, because you and I both know if you have to kick it this hard, there's water in the bucket. So people go, I don't know how to tell how much water is in the bucket. When I lift it, I go, sure shit, you know how to tell how much milk is in the jug when you take it out of the fridge. All I'm saying is that the correct amount of nutrients is the correct amount of nutrients. And more than that, whatever that number is, more than that won't get you more more and even if we took the same scenario and we doubled the light so we had a thousand watt light 10 plants veg for four weeks one gallon bucket transplanted to a five gallon bucket and finished if we wanted twice the yield what would you do you would double the light now you wouldn't put twice the light on the same canopy you would double the canopy and then you would also have to double the nutrients right because you're not using twice as many per tray but you are doubling the quantity but you're also doubling the water that you're using you're also doubling the canopy you're also doubling the light so all i'm suggesting is is that when you say things like oh i want more yield so i'm going to get better genetics i go what 
I'm gonna I want more yield, so I'm gonna raise the nutrients. And I would have to say, why? Are you using too few now? Because more nutrients, light water CO2 equals sugar and oxygen. Nowhere in this equation do nutrients exist. So this is the relationship between light water, nutrients, and yield. And so the frequency of watering and and the frequency of feeding is that is like specifically what we're talking about here. And I go over a modified version of this. On page 83, I go over a modified version of the feed water, water, water feed schedule and how fill the buckets get right because that's what you're looking for so i go over this 80th page 83 in the grow book about the schedule because i mean even if let's just and and there's you know there's even more to consider because i say you know you don't even know what our you could hit the right turn hard at 4900 you know use this new little engine braking step on the gas in second gear and accelerate out or you might be at a or you might be at a red light and have to start in first right but then what happens if you have a four cylinder or an eight? A stick or an automatic? All of these things have different components to driving them, right? You just don't drive a four like an eight. If you want to do a burnout in a four, it takes a lot more RPMs than an eight because we're talking about a difference in torque. Yet they both run on fuel. They're both in the front of the car. They both require maintenance. You know what I mean? You can buy a Ford Mustang four or an eight. And yet from the outside, it's Mustang. All I'm saying is you open up a beer and a volleyball game at the beach doesn't break out. Are all beers the same? Yeah. I mean, Germany laughs at American beers. They say it's not beer. You drink a German beer and you know why the Germans say it's not beer. American beer is not beer. And yet at the end of after the word, you know what they call German beer in Germany, right? So, uh, you know, German beer, American beer, light beer. Is there a difference? Yes. Marlboro cigarettes, Camel cigarettes, basic cigarettes. See what I'm saying? There just comes this point where it's ubiquitous. Now, you might have your own tastes. I prefer Kush. I like a good lemon haze. I like an 84 skunk, the ones that made you stink like B.O. Where I'd come home, my mom would be like, you stink. And I'd giggle because I had an eighth of a skunk in my pocket. <clears throat> so, let's just say, which comes down to that caller's question. The final thing was really that mag, the Cal mag. Might there be a difference between between cocoa and media? Yeah, there might be a difference. Might there be a difference between media and hydro? Yeah, probably there's a difference. But if you're not good enough at growing to take advantage of the difference, does the difference matter? And the answer is absolutely not. Because if you kill your shit because you bought an LED with the perfect spectrum, because you put your light too close and you overfed and you overwatered, who cares? Who cares about the spectrum? Listen, you can have the greatest idea in the world. There are lots of growers that grow fantastic cannabis. However, there are lots of people that wrote apparently fantastic books about growing cannabis. However, there are lots of people with videos about growing cannabis. However, they don't put it together in the same way that I do. Are we all doing the same thing? Are we all playing the same game? Yeah. Are we all doing the same thing? No. And that's why when that's why when they ask me to be on other shows, I'm like, what? What? I, I, I'm not going to discuss the difference between strains with you because I just don't care. I'm not going to talk about legalization. Because I smoked it when it wasn't legal. Sold it when it wasn't legal. I'm just not going to... 
I just, those things, anybody can talk about those things. But I've never heard anybody talk about like the three pot shuffle between veg and flour and the relationship of nutrients to light. And if I go on one of their shows, they're going to say something and I'm just going to be like, what? And it's inappropriate for me to diss someone on their own show. So, listen, anybody can show you how to grow a plant. There are a lot of people that can show you how to grow a plant. In fact, all the other channels about plant <coughs> growing will either show you how to grow or not grow a plant. You can go to Grow Diaries. They're great too. There are lots of channels about growing. But nobody puts out the information accurately, do they? They don't divide it up in such a way that you can comprehend it. They don't apply it in such a way that you can relate. Like, you could buy this Blue Lab PH PPM meter for $125 at my store, cash, or this Hannah meter, continuous, handheld, for $90. They don't tell you that you're going to spend so much time with your plant that your old lady's going to get pissed. She's going to be like, you know what I mean? Like, you already don't do the things that you're supposed to do, and now you're going to have a project that takes up all your time? That's super expensive? Ah, listen, if you're the kind of person that does that kind of project in that kind of a situation, listen, the relationship's going to fail. The grow is going to fail. Why? Because growing is a 12-week process at the minimum. You have to be consistent for 12 weeks, which means you have to have a relationship that lasted longer than 90 days. And I just don't. <laughs> Got to recognize your limitations. Once you can recognize your limitations, you got to recognize the limitations of the plant. <clears throat> In terms of the limitations of the plant, this is a 12 week process. Whatever your light is, it can't be at 100% until halfway through flower minimum because you need the canopy. Okay. I got this letter from... Uh, Uh, Cold War Organics showed up in the mail. This is their, uh, this is their advertising letter to me. I, I just want, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think you'll know why I want you to hear it after I read it. All right, listen, give me, wait, let me, let me, uh, oh, 661, 661. Good morning. What can I do for you? Hi, yes, yeah, so I'm the, the guy from the desert who called, and I just had a couple questions because I'm very new to growing, and I'm glad okay. I found your channel before I bought anything. Um, so my question comes from soil. It's the one thing that I'm very confused on. I'm okay. not sure, because I've heard everything from cocoa, perlite, the, the different kinds of soil and everything, and I just wanted to know, since you're talking about this, if you have like a recommendation on like the right thing to start out with, yeah. I don't have any preferences. I just want to get it done right. You know what I mean? Well, I'll tell you, any soil in a hydro store is just fine. If we think about it in terms of PPM, where the plant wants 100 in week one, 200 in week two, 300 in week three, and 400 in week four. If we just assign it a slope based on a growth rate, the bigger the plant, the more, excuse me, the more she wants. Then you figure in week three, she wants as much as she did in the first two weeks. And in week four, she wants even more. So if you make a nutrient, if you make a media hot enough for week four, that's literally 10 times hotter than what week one wants. So here's my observation. When you look at my store, I sell 50 pallets a year of Ocean Forest, 35 pallets a year of Happy Frog. I sell 20 pallets a year of Roots Organics. 20 pallets a year of cocoa ready grow 20 pallets of aeration five pallets of moisture mix um, i sell three pallets of those giant sunshines and five pallets of the pro grow in like the big six cubic foot and i'll tell you the only i sell all those brands i've sold royal gold black gold all the brands in my store and from my perspective the only two problems that ever come back for my store is people say their soil was too hot or it gave them bugs, okay? First off, let me say, if you get black gnats from your media, 
from indoor media, the stuff we sell in our hydro store that's been pasteurized and then has good stuff added back in. If you get bugs, you're overwatering. If you buy outdoor media, media meant for outdoors, of course you're gonna get bugs. It's meant for outdoors. You water it, the bugs fly away. You would never notice it. In your house, it's like third world trying to eat dinner with the bugs flying around you. Now, if you don't make the media right. too hot, and like people talk about, they make their cold and hot mixes of soil and media and all this. They talk about all that. The reality is, is if you make it too hot, you're going to kill your shit. So you have to make a media such that doesn't kill your plants. Then when your plants run out of something, it's your job to add it. Listen, when you say you just want to do it right, it doesn't matter what media you buy if you're growing outdoors you can buy you can't buy the miracle grow stuff because it's got too much nitrogen but you can buy any soil for outdoors people grow 19 foot plants i mean it's a it's eight weeks in veg 10 weeks outdoors eight 10 weeks flower i mean 20 weeks i mean you're going to be in it for 20 weeks so think about all the things that can go wrong all right so soil is one of what 50 things there's watering there's nutrients there's all of these conditions so when you say you want to do it right soil is this much a percentage no matter which one you buy because if you buy right. see what i'm saying yeah definitely and i just wanted to also say this thank you for doing what you do i don't know i know a lot of people argue with you i appreciate what you do and having that book and i know it requires a lot of work oh yeah so listen, you have to, I'm not where I should be unless 3% of the people disagree aggressively. Because if you don't offend anybody, who's going to listen to your message? And if you offend absolutely everybody, that doesn't work either. So what I try to do is I try to walk this line where I get a certain amount of pushback. Because if I get that pushback, I know I'm far enough. Plus it's a bunch of guys like me. I mean, what am I going to do? Show up and talk about flowers? You know what I mean? Like, Right, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I can agree with that. Yeah, you got to know your demographic. So you're saying basically, uh, you're basically, you're basically saying start off with whatever and then just listen to your plant and react to it. In, in media, you always react because you're trying to find the minimum and then you add a little more and next time you add a little more a little earlier that's why you take such careful notes like in like in the 20 week tracker you take such careful notes because next time how are you going to do it better if you don't remember what you did this time and if you killed your shit how are you going to take any notes so you sort of got to start under the gun instead of on top of it once you get the minimum next time you can do a little better Right. And now you got a little, you got a little rid of a rhythm going. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it's never about doing more when it comes to growing plants. It's always about doing less. In fact, um, that's, the, that's why I was putting you, uh, showing you guys, it's all about doing less, but not less for less sakes. I'm saying less than you think, but yet the appropriate amount. All right, listen, six, six, one. I got another call. Thank you for that call. All right, 916, you're on at the Grow Boss. What can I do with you, for you? Um, hi, I was just calling. Um, so you've been going over um, uh, watering all morning. Um, and I just have a question about, um, I'm just switching from um, soil to um, a rock wool medium. Oh? I'm listening. Oh, okay. And um, I'm really... Um, I've been looking at forms and other things like that, and I've just been trying to figure out um, drip times for um, what amount of irrigation that you would recommend. Yeah. I would and recommend, it's a very simple thing. And uh, all right, I appreciate the call. Thank you. It's a really simple thing. Water it when it needs to be watered. If you wait until it droops, you dehydrated the roots and that's too far. That's why they flood the table like once a day. But again, I don't know how big your plant is, um, here is, I'll give you an example. I'll show you, I'll show you exactly the picture you want to see. Check this out. Save that. Boom. Look at this picture. I always think this picture is funny. Okay. When you take a closer look at this picture, what is it really? 
Well, first off, you'll see the little Root Riot starters, the little the little starter plugs on a black tray. Now that black tray is what, two inches high? So this table is not being flooded. <clears throat> okay, so there's no drippers on the Rockwell cubes, so it's not top dripped either. So now we know that he's top feeding. So this guy waters his plants whenever he waters them, not even getting there yet. This guy waters his plants whenever he waters them. And then you can tell that he's got, he sort of has like this rotation going. As they get bigger, they get moved to the back left. Now, if you look right there at six o'clock, front and center, just to the left of the Root Riot starter tray with the clones in them, with the starts in them, you can see that there's that six inch Rockwell cube right there. And then if you look to the left at like the seven o'clock position up against the edge, you can see that there's a four inch cube with a start in it. Why? Well, I'll tell you, that's because that four inch cube is about to go on that six inch cube. And so how, what does he do? Well, a couple days before he needs it, he puts the six inch cube on the tray and whatever he waters the rest of the shit with, he waters through that and he preps that block ready for the four by four. So this guy's not flooding his table. This guy's watering. So let me ask you, here is the, here is a plant. Now you can tell exactly how big they are. And some are smaller than others. But let's just say on average, they're all the same size. You're a caller that calls up that says, that doesn't give me the size of the block, how old they are, how much light they have, that doesn't give me any details about it. And then says, what RPM should I be driving at? Well, here you go. Here's the size of the engine. It's a thousand watt light on a mover over this table. These are the plants. You tell me, how often would you feed these? I'll give you the same answer I gave you about your garden. Water when they need to be watered. And if you water too much, you're gonna get overwatering and kill your plant. I can't know what that is. I can describe to you, however, a situation that you could judge your plants and look at them. That's my observation here is you're looking for me to teach you how to drive or pilot a ship. You don't understand any of the components. So let's just say, boom, once every 16 hours. Okay, once every 16 hours. What would your answer be? Oh, okay. What would you do every 16 hours for all 12 weeks? D did you change the bucket size? Did you stack the rock? Did you... It's such a, the question, while totally legitimate, totally legitimate question, everybody has that question, totally legitimate. What I'm trying to put in perspective is how far away the question is from the reality of the answer. What RPM should I be at? What? Now, we all know driving, so I use driving as an example because we all know. <laughs> I use RPMs, and that's if you're using a stick. If you have an automatic, you don't even have a choice. It's whatever the fuck the car tells you it's going to be. <laughs> and yet, it's the same right turn with the same driver behind the wheel. So, you can't, you're looking for a very specific answer. How many miles to the moon? The fuck? What time of year? Perhelion? Aphelion? You know, a seasonal? <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of factors. That's why they say they have to launch in a window because there's only so many opportunities to hit a moving target. Because if you're off, you're never going to get there, right? You're going to buzz right through an asteroid where Alderaan used to be. So what I'm suggesting... Oh, anyway, I wanted to read you. We were talking about nutrients. So I just wanted to read uh, this letter that I got from... Uh, Cold War Organics. <laughs> it's just so funny. Okay. Hi. H-I-G-H. It's not a hello. It's hi. 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 Like, super funny, right? <clears throat> when we say our shit's better, we're not kidding. But we're not asking you to believe us. Just based on our say-so. We're more than happy to prove it. If you're willing to give us a chance, we'll send you a free sample. Not only are our products the best pot fertilizers ever, 
ever. But they're also clean green certified. I, I don't know what that is. Every ingredient we use. Oh, it's defined. I never read the far in the, I never read that far. I read that first sentence originally and I was like, oh, that was it. It was over for me. Okay, every ing every ingredient we use is either OMRI listed or NOP compliant. And they are ground fine enough to either dissolve or suspend in water. What other choices are there if it doesn't dissolve or suspend? Suspend doesn't mean at the top. Suspend just means between the molecules and not dissolving. So I just are every ingredient and they are ground fine enough to either dissolve or suspend in water. And I would just like to point out that they capitalize the word and. And, and I know that probably doesn't matter to most people, but and is not the subject. And it would literally be listed or NOP compliant and they are ground fine enough to either dissolve or stay suspended in water. Because I mean, that's, that's the subject is that you're, we're building up to the dissolve or stay suspended. But if you think about it, like if you just took salt at the restaurant and you poured the whole thing into the water, some would dissolve. <laughs> some would stay suspended. <laughs> yep, that's right. These are all dry, soluble, suspendable powders. So we're not, and you're not paying through the nose to ship water. Okay, so they're selling a powdered nutrient. Okay, we saw this with raw nutrients. Raw nutrients, I, I, I don't think anybody, there was nobody else who said, take everything we can and break it down as far as humanly possible. Oh, you know what? I just, um, it was what? Harley and NPK nutrients. Ah, I don't actually sell these powders in my store. However, it just takes up an enormous amount of space. But NPK University, this is a nutrient company decided that they were going to run a school on how to use nutrients. So rather than focus on nutrients, this is Harley Smith. I'm sure you've seen his videos. He really gets deep into the nutrients. I mean, plants are autotrophic. You know what that means? It means they turn toward the light. Why? Because they're based on photosynthesizers and they turn toward the light. So he's explained to you about plants and lights. But here's a nutrient company. All they really do is teach you about nutrients, which is great if you want to know about nutrients. But here, like me, I don't, I mean, it's, I teach you about all the parts and pieces, nutrients or not. So, ah, just so much light over there. Okay. This is a great guy. I love Harley. I love NPK. I don't sell their product because they take so many products to fill your shelf. Oh my God, 16 fucking products. What they did was they took each mineral, put it in a bag and they sell it like that. Great. That's why I tell you guys it's all the same shit. Because if you can make your own recipe, dude, bottle your shit. Put it on a shelf in a store like everyone else did. Get a budget. Make some advertising. Put them in my book. You got a nutrient line. Vega Matrix with Kyle Cushman. What did he do? There were GH had Geo Organics before him. What did he do? He made some organic nutrients. Put his name on it. Ta-da! That's why anybody that wants to enter the marijuana business does it with nutrients because they just go to the place that makes nutrients and says, make me what everybody else makes. And then I'll put my own name on it because I'm really good at marketing. So NPK breaks them down into their individual components. I think it's brilliant. Like, you know, they invest. It's a lot of lecture from a lot of lecture about nutrients that don't have anything to do with anything. However, it's just like Harley says. The N does this, the P does that, the K does that. Then when you run out of something, it's your job to add it, whether it's soil or hydro or anything else. Yeah. And if you guys remember, like this guy, oh, I'll show you. Um, this guy, this guy used to work for, uh, oh, look at here, look at this. I, look at how many products that is. I remember when that thing like used to be like three wide. Oh yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and the, the chance of you killing your shit by using too much with any powder is so high. But here's, I mean, like when I tell you it's all the same shit, here's Harley at NPK. I mean, here's Harley at Clonex. So before Harley worked at NPK, he was given his same shtick over at Clonex for their nutrients, Europonics, and their cloning gel. Why? 
<clears throat> That's all the same thing. So he has his spiel the same way I have mine. Only I can actually talk about the light, the water, the nutrients, the meters, the CO2. I can talk about all the different components. Why? Because I'm here at a store. Now, if I was a nutrient guy, I would talk about nutrients. Why? Because that's what I know. But I'm the guy who puts it all together. And I see it from the perspective of a customer as well, because nobody knows other people work at a hydro store. Listen, these people are pushing nutrients. So of course they're gonna tell you about nutrients, right? So, yep, that's right. These are all dry, so oh, so yep, that's right. These are all dry soluble suspendable powder so we're not and you're not paying through the nose to ship water okay i love that let's see if um cold war organics let's just check out cold war organics on ebay cold war organics okay so we got some cold war memorabilia cold war organics nutrients Um, oh, okay, let's try this then. Okay. They sent me a wholesale price list. Boom, just so you guys know, because I know better. Oh. Boom. Okay. So, case pack 12, case weight 13, I'll assume pounds. Suggested retail 25. So, it's 25 bucks for one pound. Okay, okay, wait, wait. I think, ah, I think I got this. Um, okay, let's, uh, I think I got this one. All right. So, powdered cool bloom we all know what this is it's two kilos it's that zero twenty eight forty five two kilos thirty bucks in my store this stuff is one pound for twenty five two kilos thirty that's two point two pounds which would technically be sixty seven fifty in this if we took it and just doubled it up um so even at 50 bucks. So I may not be paying through the nose for water, but I'm definitely paying more than other stuff. Now, some nutrients, NPK, like literally, right? They just buy boatload, literally a boatload from China, N, P, and K, right? And then they mix them however they want and mix them. We, we just do it just like that. Boom. So they're more expensive. And then when we look at, since we know the price of theirs is 30, let's take a look at NPK nutrients. Boom on eBay. Oh, check check out my mic. Okay. Um, all right, let's do this. Buy this now. First one that comes up. We'll just take NPK. So I'm. Uh, uh, oh, they just bloom. Whatever that is, bloom. Okay. One point, let's do two pound dry. <clears throat> so two pound dry shipped to me on eBay, 80 bucks. So two pound dry. So it cost me, let's see, 10 bucks. So it cost me 15 bucks a bag. It cost me 12.50 a bag. No, 10 bucks a bag, 12 bucks, 12, 12 and back, 10, 120. It cost me, let's say 15 bucks a bag for one pound, so it cost me 30. I would have to sell them for 50 in my store for two pounds. This is two pounds for 80. Okay, so the, this one's less expensive. The Cold War is less expensive than the blue, than the raw, in terms of this particular product. All right, but uh, it's Bud Bread. I don't know what, oh, Bud Bread. I don't, I don't know what that is, but whatever. But like, I definitely would be crazy to put two powdered nutrients in my store. Me, oh, it is Bud Bread. Yeah, oh, here, here's a plug for them. Nice packaging. So you should buy Cold War powdered nutrients. 
you know, even if we do, uh, even if we looked up uh, this one, Fox Farm, um, even if we looked up this, I mean, we know the price of these. It's thirty dollars for the one pound jug. You know, twenty seven bucks for the one pound, whatever it is, for the Fox Farm trio. All right, so. There is beauty in our product's simplicity. Choices no longer have to be so confusing by the dizzying array of newts for cannabis. We offer only four different products. Well, if you say four products, do you really need to say different? Because, I mean, we don't offer four of the same product. So we offer four different products. And that's all anyone will need. Boom, right there. Four products is all you need. I'm going to say it's Grow, Bloom, Cal Mag, and Mag Sulfur. So here's the deal. Send an email with your name, company, UVN, and we'll ship you a sample. We've added some information. If you offer the sample, let us know after time. So you should buy Cold War Nutrients. Oh, Cold War Organics. Just because they sent me this letter and their Bud Bread is a 5.4, 2.8, 8.4. .8 Their coming of age is a 0311. Their angel's touch is a 0 0.5017. And their tea plant mediation is a 0015. So basically, if you add angel's touch and plant mediation, you have a 0.5, oh no, no, those are, they have two of the same thing. They have one that's a 0017 and a 0015. Then they have a 0311 and a 528. I mean, I just rounded them up, but. <laughs> but here, right here in their letter, one more time, I just want to point out, we only offer four different products. They don't mention that two of them happen to be the same. And that's all anyone will need. So buy Cold War Organics, whatever that is. Because that's all you will ever need. So Cold War Organics just told you, whoever these people are, they just told you that four bottles of nutrients is all you need. And two of them need to be the same. Listen, you need one grow, one bloom, one CalMag, and one sweet. I mean, those are, that's the relationship between them. Um, you need, you switch from CalMag to sweet halfway through flower. Like, you just go from Cal Mag to Mag Sulfur halfway through flower. You just go from Cal Mag to Mag Sulfur, page 80. Cal Mag to Mag Sulfur, see the blue to yellow? That's Cal, blue's yellow, blue's, <laughs> blue's Cal, yellow Sulfur. You switch from Cal Mag to Sulfur halfway through flower, but the Mag stays all the way through. Bah! It's all the same shit. GH bought Botanicare. They're both bottled at the same facility. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> they just have like overhead bins with a powder coming out, right? So they just have this like bar squirt gun for nitrogen. <laughs> 30 ounces of nitrogen in, 30, you know, 20 ounces of the... Dude, they just have some sort of cocktail gun. You know what I mean? Like you look at beer makers. They just bring in hops and mix it up in different concentrations with other whatever they do to make beer. I did it once. Best beer I ever had. Ah, oh, so good making your own beer. I know why Germany laughs at us when it comes to our beer. Because our beer, light beer is silly. The very American thing. But then in Germany, when you open up a can of beer, they don't show, you don't get magically transported to the races or to the beach volleyball game. You just don't get magically transported there. Okay, you know, one last thing when we're talking, we're talking about nutrients, one last thing when it comes to the transplanting. When you go from veg to flour, let's say you go four week veg, eight week flour, you got your one gallon bucket, you transplant to your three gallon bucket, <clears throat> you don't change your nutrients. You just literally water the, sa the same the way you were watering before, you would just water a three gallon bucket. Why? Because one, you don't change two things at once. So if you go from a one to a three, you don't change the nutrients too. Also, when you go into flour, 
plant's going to still be in veg for two weeks. It takes them two weeks to transition. So whatever you did yesterday, you're going to do today again. So literally like your first watering and flower, when you transplant is literally going to be whatever you did last time. Because you're not going to transplant and change your nutrients and change the light. Like you're suddenly not going to take a 200 watt plant in a one gallon bucket and put it into a three gallon bucket and you know, let's say you have four plants under a 400 watt veg. In one gallon buckets, they're all 100 watts big. You got 400 watts worth of plant, 400 watts worth of light. <clears throat> when you transplant them, what are you gonna do? Give them 600 watts worth of light? Dude, you got four 100 watt plants. Why would you give them 600 watts worth of light? I mean, 600 watts, six feet away, maybe, but you're not gonna give them more light and put it closer and change their nutrients and give them more nutrients. That's why 85% of growers fail because they did all of those things all at once. And this is a plant, it's a 12 week process. Stall and balling. I'm telling you, the name of the game is always stall and balling. How long can you wait before you do something else? 12 weeks to a plant, five minutes to you. Oh yeah. Nah, it's been a fairly smooth show so far. Well, I got about a half hour left. Um, <clears throat> there were some comments I wanted to go over. Um, oh, here's one. I've got a question. I have two two by two by six tents, one for veg, the other for flower. The veg tent has a 150 watt, flower has a 300 watt. I've been getting a quarter pound for the last four runs. That's about all I'm going to get out of what I got. Maybe I need a third tent. What do you think? I'd like to get a quarter pound a month. Okay, so you, I've been getting almost a quarter pound for the last four runs. So you've been getting a quarter pound every eight weeks. Okay, if you'd like a quarter pound a month, then you should get, you should, oh, 781, call me right back. If you want that yield, then what you should do is if you're getting a quarter pound from your 300 watt LED in a two by two, then you should take the other two by two, put a 300 watt in it, buy one more two by two tent and put another 300 watt in that. I mean, just take your flower tent and duplicate it twice more and do a three light rotation. 978, good morning, what can I do for you? Oh, just, um I, I'm having a problem on my three light rotation. Okay. What's the problem? Well, you, you seem to having like, I got, a, I got a 10 week flower and I can't, the scheduling, that the plants don't grow that well into it. Now I got a two by, two by four, 10, six feet tall with, um, a 12 banger T5, and I got two of them, and one two by two by four tent with a um, two uh, a two foot 12 ball 12 ball T5, and is coordinating between getting them in there. And I sort of like gave up and more or less just um, more or less I'm just going from one tent into the other, keep vegging it till it fills out the product or fills out the tent before I put it in the flower. Okay. And instead of like sure. making a smooth transition, because I want to, I can only, I'm in Massachusetts, I can only have six plants. Um, I'll tell you if you can only, if, if you can only have six plants, I would have suggested a two light rotation with a longer veg. So let's start okay. there. I would have just said instead of buying three lights, I would have bought two. I would have got them a little bit bigger so you get the same yield, but you get it less often. Now, the next component yeah. the next component that you have is that I, and I, I didn't quite get your tents. Are you saying that you have three of the same tents that are two by four? With no, I have, I have two tents 
instead of two by four, uh, six feet tall, and one tent two by two by four foot tall. Everything's under T fives. Um. Okay. And okay. Wait. 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 This suddenly you, you've. You've, I believe that you sort of answered the question right here. Um, you said you had. Okay. You said you had two, two by four by six tents. Both of these tents have yep. well have a twelve bulb T five in them, right? Correct. Okay. Is it a four foot twelve bulb T five? Yep. Yep. They're four footers. Yep. Okay. Now. And they have. Uh, Six, six switches on them, so I, every switch is 100 watts, so I can control the light level that way. Okay. All right. Now, your veg is a two-by-two two tent. How many... What yeah, light basically, is in... I use that to get it started from the cloning or from the uh, seed starter. Oh, I knew that was your veg tent. I try to get about, I get about four plants, three no, to no, four plants no, per no. tent. No, 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 don't even tell me. Um, don't even okay. tell me about that. I want to know what light's in it. What light is in it? It's a uh, T5 uh, two-footer in the small tent. How many bulbs? Uh, 12. Okay. Basically, I got, like, like your books, I got 200 watts, originally 200 watts going into a 400 watt. But what oh. I got, I got one that's only a 12, 12 or so that's okay. a 400 watt. But the, uh, I mean, an eight banger, but the new one, new, the newer one that was on sale, so I got 12 instead of uh, 8 bulbs on a T5. <laughs> okay. Two, I'm just going to I'm just gonna do a little bit of math for you. And right. I'm going to show you um, one veg, 2 by 2 by, uh, that doesn't even matter, 2 by 2. 12 bulb T5 2 foot. Okay. Now, there's a small amount of math that goes along with this, and it's this. A 2 foot T5 equals 24 watts and 2,000 lumens. A 4 foot T5 equals 54 watts and 5,000 lumens. Now, the reason I bring this up specifically is because if we do the math where you have 24 four foot bulbs we have let's see so it's 10,000 so it's 20 so what is it 5,000 times 20 is 100,000 plus 20 so 120,000 lumens in flour we have 120,000 lumens in flour now if we do a two foot t5 it equals 24 watts and oh okay so now we look at this one and you have 12 bulbs times 2000 your veg equals 24000 watts right okay so if you do a three light rotation veg equals one half flower so all right you have in your case however your veg equals 20% flour. Now, that may not sound like much, but I'm telling you that's shifting from second to fourth gear when you go into flour because you don't have enough in veg. Oh, okay. Then, then when we look at your, your ratio, now that's just your light. Now when we look at your space ratio, veg must equal one half flour. So, you have two by four, which is eight times two. So you have 16 square feet in flour and you have four square feet in veg I mean that's a okay, you have yeah. half of you have half the veg lot you have half the space and you have you have one fifth the light no wonder it's not working ah uh, okay because I originally had just I just originally started off with two tents, a, a, the small one, two by two, by two and uh, the two by four, and I figured a, a, a two light rotation that way, and then seeing how I had plants left over, I got another, I got another tent in order to 
take up the slack. Basically, what I did. So I'm I'm staggering the, the bigger tents or the two by fours to try to get, you know, separate my harvest. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's I all listen. personal, though. Listen, listen. I totally appreciate the call. Thank you so much. But here we have it again. The guy's complaint wasn't about his plants. I mean, his can he didn't have enough canopy. That was his observation, right? Like he's having trouble getting up and going. <clears throat> and that's because he had half the light he should have had in veg, and he had, he had one quarter of the space. All I'm suggesting is that here's a guy who didn't have a problem with his plants. Why? Because he's growing. He's growing and things are healthy. And what was the modification? The modification was on his equipment. It wasn't even on, like, I, he didn't call up and be like, oh my God, my tips are burnt. You know what I mean? He wasn't like, you know, he wasn't, he didn't have any complaints about the plant. <coughs> he just wanted to know a little bit about the relationship between his lights. That's why when you micro focus on something like spectrum, I go, what the fuck do I care that you're missing, you're missing 80% of your light and 50% of the space you're supposed to have. Listen, if you, if you get the right light and you fix the space issue, dude, you're going to double your harvest because you got all the right components. A problem free harvest with all the right components from where he was at. If you double the space, he's going to double the harvest. And you had to increase the light to get the right light. All I'm suggesting is that something like that, could you imagine, like, uh, would nutrients fix that problem? 970, good morning. Hey, I got a question. Um, I want to know, what do you think about harvesting mature colas before the rest of the, uh, can the, rest of the canopy? Okay, let me ask you. What do you think that, let's say, let's say you know it's going to be harvest, it's going to be ripe in two weeks. Whatever ripe is in two weeks. It's two weeks from now till two weeks afterward. So you tell me, what do you think is going to happen during those four, that four week period, two before and two after? What do you think from all your research? What do you think? I think that the rest of the buds will mature better since I cut off the main cola because the main cola is already mature. So they actually get, uh, you know, probably a, another five, 10% stronger than they normally would by harvesting that, uh, that mature cola because that mature cola will sit there a little more darker in the resin than the other ones in the bottom. Okay, I concur. Now, let me ask you, should you harvest that main cola two weeks or one week before you finish? <laughs> well, if it's outdoors and depending on the strain and depending on how tall away from that coal is from the rest of it, I mean, one to two weeks. Okay. I accept that range also. So what we're suggesting is from about two, and this is, you see, you have to be careful when you say you're the grow boss and we do this because you've answered your own question, but I'm going to change the word such that you can't say anything about, you know what I mean? Like, so here's how I would suggest it. I would suggest that just like they harvest grapes in three passes, that harvesting your garden in three passes might be appropriate as well. There's clearly going to be yeah. based on strain and season and many factors that starting from about two weeks prior to ripeness, whatever you define as ripeness, you might consider starting a first run. You will find that yeah. your second run will, will ripen up a little more anywhere from, let's say five days before the harvest date to five days after where you might harvest a second time and then you might harvest a third time, correct? Yeah, but I think what I really want to know now that we're talking on the same page is I, I think indoor is a little more sensitive than outdoor. So really what I want to know is, say, a greenhouse, right? So like, I'm from California. A lot of times people will harvest at the end of August, and then you find a lot of people with a little more secure area to grow will, will harvest in September, October. But the guys in late August have the weight, but they don't have 
the high THC development as the guys September October do. So what I wanted to know. Whoa, 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 you think whoa, whoa. Be a good idea specific. Wait, that was very specific. They cut down early to beat the market price. They cut down early to beat the market uh, price because you said it's less yes. secure because there comes a point where nobody goes outdoors and steals unripened crops. Everyone knows when it's done. So you've defined a difference yeah. where people are willing to. And this is what I say about hydro. Listen, not everything is based. Not every decision is based on quality in hydro. You harvest based on weight. Yeah. Otherwise, why are you in hydro? Because you're not going to get the quality you would in media. So in hydro, you harvest based on. So weight. you don't think you don't think that that window of two weeks is different between indoor and outdoor. OK, let me say this. I, I think that with any fruit, think about how they transport tomatoes from Mexico, because that's what seems yeah, to be a month Walmart. early. They harvest them 10 days early and they ripen on the Put way in. And right. Yeah. They, ripen in the, they ripen in your house because they, they take them so early. I'm just suggesting that. But this is for personal consumption. And really what I want to know is about how much on the out i think i think we're on the same page in terms yes, of harvesting as necessary what we're talking about is a, yeah, I've, I've a lot of sorry go on yeah go ahead no that's it okay all right i'll finish answering that thanks for the call what we've seemed to agree on is that there is a process that happens starting about two weeks before you harvest whatever to about two weeks after you harvest it so everything has a window listen lettuce Maybe because lettuce you harvest in one month, in 30 days, in 23 days, maybe the, the lettuce harvest is shorter. But there's a window where things ripen. Now, his question I very, believe, I, I very much believe is, can you sustain a better yield harvesting three times? So let me ask you, because I agree with everything he said. Yes, you take the top bud and over the next 10 days, everything else ripens. And then you take that brown. So let's define it in more quantitative terms from a business analysis point. Okay, so let's say that you harvest 15% bud on the first round. No, 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 too much. 10% bud from the top. You take 10% the first round. Okay, now you've got a plant with 90% left on it. Okay, 10 days later, you harvest 75% of the bud. Boom. Now you've got a plant with 15% on it. The question becomes is, is it worth leaving that plant under there for 15%, uh, 15%, hang, 313, hang on one sec. So is it worth leaving your plant there for 15% that might harvest into 17% more, you know, like 2% more, you get 17%, or do you chop it down and put a new plant and try to get a second round in? Now, in terms of quality, the longer you grow it, to some extent, the better it gets with diminishing returns. You get eight weeks in, that's about all you're ever going to get. Nine weeks, a little better. 14 weeks, probably no better than 12 weeks. Now, is it, that's on average. Some strains, but still, some strains, I mean, you go 10 days, two weeks, I'm just saying. At that point, you would have to harvest a bud at each point. You would have to weigh out what you got. You would have to balance it against, because let's just say at... At, at two weeks before you harvest the top bud. Then you harvest the whole plant at two weeks, sacrificing the bottom 15%. But you bring in a new plant. Isn't if that new plant gets you more weight in the time frame for the season than letting it go long, there might be a business decision made. And that seems to really be the argument about legalizing cannabis because you and I both know once corporate gets their hand on it, they'll pull the best strains, the best strains, the best strains of those strains. They don't even have the genetic breed. They're going to sell so much that after 50 strains, they'll have the strongest one. Like tomatoes today, they're the biggest with the lowest sugar count in the history of tomatoes. And that's the whole thing. What makes tomatoes delicious is that bricks count. When you get that high bricks concentration, that sugar, that's always what you're looking for. Why? Because plants are glucose creators. They take light and water, CO2, and they make sugar and oxygen. Hey, all right, caller, what can I do for you? Hey, Grow Boss, how you doing today, man? Good morning, sir. My store is going to have to open in a little bit. And we were super busy yesterday because I think because my store looks so good already, we had a killer day yesterday. Yeah. A lot of customers, they said they liked it. Yeah, I was checking it out, man. The store looks great. Thank you. What can I do for you? 
Okay, um, I wanted to ask you, I know you just said this once before in uh, one of the uh, cannabis hotlines, but uh, the nutrients being in the media when you buy it from the hydro store, um, I know it, it, it has nutrients in it, so when you transplant a cutting into the media, um, should you wait a while to start feeding it, like, like let some of that, because I, I think you had said something about everything is not available to the plant. And I couldn't remember when you said it will be available to the plant. So that's my question there. Okay, I understand what you're asking. So let's say you go from a one to a three gallon bucket. You're adding two gallons of nutrients. I mean, two gallons of media that has nutrients. If you add soil, if you add cocoa, you're not adding nutrients. See what I'm saying? Because cocoa doesn't have nutrients. So again, grower talent, because you have to assess if you're gonna go, let's say your four week, but let's say your first, okay. you're growing in a one, you go to a three. Let's say you're using ocean forest. And let's say that you put a plant in here from a 16 ounce cup and there was enough nutrients in here for two weeks. Okay. Then you fed and you fed. Okay. When you go from here to here, if you're in soil, there may there may very well be one or one week, 10 days, two weeks worth of nutrients in this bucket for this plant. You may not, that's why I say when you go from one bucket to the next, you don't have to add food because there's some in here, just water it. Now. Okay, yeah. Now you're talking about in terms of, uh, the next thing I mentioned was when you put a, when you put a 16 ounce cup that's just, you lift the plant out and it's just got that root ball where you're like, fuck yeah, that root ball. The one where you're like, you can't see the soil in there. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Your plant falls over. You got to water every day. Okay. When you put it in here into a one gallon bucket, there's seven times the amount of media with nutrients. Media. Sorry. Now, in that media, if you use cocoa, there's no nutrients. But in soil not all of the nutrients are right available like at the start of when you go in here there's there's eight red cups worth of soil in the bucket you put one red cup full of roots four weeks later the roots are going to be they're going to they're going to be like four cups big they'll go all the way around the outside and there'll still be some soil inside the media but you know what i'm talking about you pull the plant out and all the media stays there because you clearly grew it too big for that pot you know what i'm talking about yeah okay. i understand yeah okay. i know exactly what you're talking about okay you're like fuck oh, and you literally grab it and you're like fuck too big and it comes right out you don't have to knock it nothing it just comes right out okay that plant with that Fly right out okay when you talk when you take out if you had one gallon of soil sorry if you had seven cups red cups of soil and you had one red cup of roots and the roots got bigger where did the soil go where did the soil go right okay so let's say that the roots you grew, go with it. the roots grew three cups so now you have four cups of roots and four cups of soil that's trapped inside the root. Where did the soil go? The, uh, pl the plant used it up, it dissolved. That's the connection that you're asking me about. Right, that's the organic component to soil. Now, cocoa will dissolve too. It doesn't have to dissolve as much because it has a higher aeration count. So there's not as much cocoa in a bucket as there is soil that's why soil's like a brick and cocoa so spongy because it has a higher aeration just like when we talk about the grodan stuff over there so okay. now what we're talking okay. about is yeah man the more oxygen the less even if you even if you had like nutrient cocoa there's just less cocoa so you would use up the cocoa faster that's all you see what i'm saying like not only in second gear, you start at 1500 and you end at 3900. But you were in second gear the whole time. So you're in this one gallon bucket the whole time. So veg is really one, two, three, and flower is gears four, five, six. So you can't go from second veg to fourth flower because you skip thirds, you don't get those RPMs. That's why I tell you, doesn't matter what week you fuck up in, 
If you fuck up at all, your plants are going to run into the light and burn. That's also why I tell you that veg, you have to grow them too big in veg because if you don't have a top in every hole when you start flower, where are you going to, how are you going to get a bud in every hole? So the soil gets consumed and that's the space that the roots grow into, right? Oh, okay, I understand now. Yeah, man, because I think I messed up, man. I went from cuttings in the rock wool straight to like a, it, it seems to be like almost a one. It's not quite those like the circle ones that you had on the table today, but it's a square, but it, it's got to be about a one. But I went from a cutting to a one because the, um, I didn't use the red cups because my dome, one of the, one of the cuttings was pushing up the dome. So I put them straight in those like almost ones put them at the bottom of a two by four tent. Oh, and that's another thing I wanted to ask you, man. Do you think um, the cuttings uh, uh, can go under a hundred watts, uh, four foot T5, like three feet away, three and a half feet away? Yes. Or should it, or, or should it be less than that? Yes, I think three and a half feet away. <clears throat> Listen, usually what I tell you guys is, think about it, a hundred watts at four feet is 70 watts, five watts at three feet. It's 50 watts at two feet. It's 25 watts at one foot. 25 watts at one foot is this light. Now this light is 24 watts. 24 watts at one foot is a thousand watts at 20 feet. I don't care what light you use. Think about in terms of what the plant needs. Think about in terms of the plant. Don't think about in terms of what watt, because frankly, you could use the sun if it was 96 million miles away. That's all I'm saying is it all works. Right. You have to interpret the difference between a four cylinder and eight, stick and automatic, red light and green light, yellow light. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying that there's all these interpretations. Anybody can show you how to grow a plant, but interpreting the subtleties that turn a good grow into a great grow, or frankly, in more cases than not, keep you from failing. That's what I do. That's why I don't even care about growing. Why would I ever compete with everybody else that's growing? All we're talking about is the subtleties of how to use the equipment. And that's truly the biggest failure point because it's all a range. Listen, you shift into second gear. Did you run out first to 5,900? Or did you shift from 2100 and now we're in second? I mean, there's all sorts of scenarios that get us there. That's why when somebody says, when we talk about harvesting and he, like the last caller where he says, you know, I, I noticed that, that the people that harvest earlier don't get the trichomes. Hell yeah, but they got the weight to market first. And in their business model, that may make sense for them. Plus the second harvest, they right. find that if you chop the first one down the second harvest can go long and they get their money later we don't know what their business model is like people offer me advice all the time like quit being such a dick and i go dude you don't know my business model my business model is my dick <laughs> it's easy to do that business model. <laughs> it's easy to do that business yeah model. man that, that business that business model works for me, man. I, I don't I don't even understand how people could like second guess what you're talking about, man. The arrogance for me makes it to where you know what you're talking about. You got to listen. Like, how can anybody question what you're trying to say? But like I was saying, man, the twin, I, that's how I kind of looked at it. I got eight cuttings in the one under the 100. I took two bulbs out of the, because I got an eight bulb T5. You can cut four of them on at a time. So I unplugged two of them just so I got two of them running right now. So that's 100 watts. I got eight cuttings up under there, uh, three, three and a half feet away. So that's 25 watts to each cutting. I, I thought that maybe, you know, I could, I could do that. Okay, you sound close. You know, from here, I can only put so fo fine a point on it. So what I really try to do, all right, listen, I got one more call I want to take. Th thanks for the call. So what I, hey, 913, give me, 913, give me one sec. So what I really try to do yeah is I try to give you as close as I can get you to your product because, you know, they started the call with four bulbs and then we, you found out you took out two at three and a half feet. So I just want to say that all I'm trying to do is sell you this meter if you come into my store for 125 and this Hannah for 90 used because I don't need them. I got more. That's what I'm really trying to say. And then the other half of what I'm trying to say is that, yeah, 
is that you nearly need to use the equipment and understand the thought process because five minutes to you is 12 weeks to a plant. All right, 913, good morning. And I think this is gonna be my last call, so. Hey, good morning. 913, what can I do for you? Oh, uh, hey, and thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, actually, I set up a, 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 a kind of a self-contained hydro setup. Uh, it has a reservoir, uh, uh, a plant that actually grows, you know, it's one container. Uh, the uh, the solution is pumped up to the top, and uh, kind of nerve sorry. But um, what is uh, what would be the proper uh, level of nutrients for it? Okay. Or for growing in hydro for okay. one for one point. Okay, I appreciate this call. You keep listening, and I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to start this. I'm going to end the show. Answer a question. I used to deal poker at the Stratosphere, no hold in Texas. No, you know, no limit. And I had a guy show up one night who just didn't look at his cards. Didn't look at his cards. His two cards in the hole. His two cards. He would he would just play what was face up as if he had the nuts. If he just had the highest hand, he would he would there's some hands he wouldn't bet on because it was and there were some hands that he would. No limit, hold him. No limit. Nobody knew what to do with him. He was a professional poker player. Nobody knew what the fuck to do with him because he doesn't play. He just sits there and drinks and plays the cards as if he has the nuts. Doesn't matter what his face says. Doesn't matter anything about it. You can't know any tells because he's your best friend. He's hanging out with you. He's not even there to play poker. He's just playing the nuts. Son of a bitch won. Win so much money. And he was gone like anybody else that comes through Vegas. Now, the question becomes is nutrients. So he's in hydro. So you tell me, what does nutrients matter about his system? Nutrients are related to what? The size of the plant, the stage of growth that it's in, not PPMs, but the mix of the minerals, and you know, how long, and the size of the bucket and the frequency of the watering. Because listen, hydro works like this. The roots hang into the water, right? The roots have roots receptors. Once the root receptors are full, she can't absorb anymore. In hydro, in between the water. Did I lose? Did I lose? Hang on. Hydroponics. No, no mushroom spores. I know what you're talking about because they don't have the psilocybe. But yeah, super fun project. Yes, sir. Bye. No, no mushroom spores. I get that call about once a year. Okay. Oh, fuck, what was I talking about? So what happens when you get high for two hours. You gotta end the show. Not counting the hour I was getting high before the show. So all I'm suggesting is there's that relationship that goes between all of these things. And the more factors <coughs> that you can give a coefficient to in your equation, the greater the accuracy of your model. <coughs> Whether that be ripening in trichomes or light to yield or yield to space, all of these things are what's, you know what I mean? Like all these things are the factors that go into it. So it doesn't matter if you want to know harvest weight, you have to, I mean, I can get you to the harvest, but you have to do the math. Now, on a, on a farm where you've got thousands of plants, the third harvest probably doesn't make sense. The third pass doesn't make sense. They do it with grapes, though, but the third round of wine isn't the same as the first. But they recognize that, and they make different wines, and they sell it at different levels. So that's the relationship between these things. Like, uh, I want mushroom spores now. Uh -huh. I know everybody wants mushroom spores. Don't do it. Because you end up having to go... You got to go to Walmart and you got to rent the pressure cooker because you got to sterilize the media, right? And then you got to grow the spores and you got to inoculate the media. And dude, in the end, who the fuck takes that many mushrooms? I knew a guy who grew a lot of mushrooms. He was doing them four times a week. I met him again years later at a Walmart. It wasn't the same guy. Um, okay. I guess uh, I should probably open up the store. We got the first phone call this morning. Um. <laughs> Hannah, 
Hannah Meter, 90 bucks. Blue Lab, 125. Come to the store, get it off my shelf. The biggest little hydro store. Look at me with all my stuff. Hey, dog. Look at me with all my stuff. All my new stuff. I painted the shelves. Filled up the store. We got more stuff coming. Listen, I appreciate everybody that watches and listens. I'm the Grow Boss. I hope today's thoroughly deep lesson on pot size, bucket, can um, watering frequency versus nutrients. You can find all that information in the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. Like 168 pages of information and advertising. <laughs> Listen, if you want examples of gardens and grow rooms, here's a book with gardens and grow rooms and shopping lists. If you want to know more about nutrients, all about nutrients. And of course, we've got those no more grow more cards because I always tell you guys the same thing. It's always the same questions and answers. And success, when it comes to growing cannabis, success is like literally the absence of all failure. Oh my God. One more phone call, 781. Ooh, I'm the last one. How you doing, girl boss? Good I, morning. Uh, I'm from Massachusetts. I read your book, just finished a couple weeks ago. I wish that I got it before I started growing. Um, I'm in the end of my first grow, and I had a question for you about my light. Okay. I do have a Mars Hydro 1200, and um, it is in a 4x8, which I know isn't right. Well, if you move it, if you move it, if you put it on a mover, 32 square feet, you know, 64 cubic feet so put it on a mover did i lose oh no call me back oh i didn't just hang up on you sorry about that um encore call dmt i appreciate that hey 781 call me back i think i lost you Massachusetts, call me back. Otherwise, I'm just waiting for the show to end and I'm stalling. Cleaning this shit up, putting it away. Massachusetts. Call me back, Massachusetts. I'm going to put up a little bit of end show music, Massachusetts. Hydroponics. What? Oh. Sorry, go on. Um, are you asking me if I have 20 quantity one gallon pots? Yes, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, I do. Soil, pots, all different kinds, sizes, everything. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah, anywhere from like 30 cents to three bucks. Yeah, just remind me who you are, and I'll give you a copy of my book when you come in. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, bye. Ah, uh -huh, you guys can't get a free copy of my book when you come into the store because you're not in the, you know, you're not by my store. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> um, yeah, and don't go to the store, your local store, and ask them for a grow book and be like, oh, the grow boss said this and the grow boss said that when they give you answers because... Cause that just, cause when I meet them later at the shows, they're like, Buh, they bitch at me because the customers go to the store. Cause they think it's a bunch of baba booey funny to do that shit. And it is funny. I mean, the stories are funny, but the grief that it calls me, causes me, it's just off the charts. Three, two, five. What can I do for you? Go boss. Oh, oh man. How's it going? Go boss. Good morning. Remember, every minute I stay on me? this, every minute I do this webcast, I don't have a customer. That sucks, right? All right, what can I do for you? <laughs> okay, I have a two-light rotation. I'm using a 400-watt T5, and I'm using a, uh, I got a 1,000-watt that I'm able to dim to about 600. I wanted to know, can I pull my, um, can I pull my eight plants from under the 400 that I have, and uh, put them up under the 600, uh, dim, dim it down to got my 1,000 600 and put them up under there for 12, 12 hours, would it be okay? And, 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 and when it goes back in the cloud, am I able to turn it back up to a thousand because I vegged them up under that thing? Okay, I lost a little bit of the early call again. Two light rotation. Tell me about the two lights again, please. 
Um, I have a two light, uh, two light rotation, 400 watt, T5, eight ball. And I have a thousand watt, but I'm able to dim it. Thousand watt HPS, but I'm able to dim it uh, to 750 or 600 with the balance. Okay. And my question was, am I able? Okay, go ahead. Okay, I, I think I, I got this. Okay, one, a T5 puts out okay. a little less light than, a, than the equivalent HID. So you're going from like a four banger to like a six banger, eight banger in flower. See what I'm saying? So first thing is, 781, call me back in one sec. So the first thing is, uh, you would literally have to like, when you go from veg to flower, consider that even if you turned your 1000 down to a 400, a 400 watt HID is like a 500 watt T5. But you have a 400 watt T5. So you're going to 600 watts. So your 400 watt T5 is what, three feet away? Yeah, three feet away. So you would do 600 watts at five feet away. You just, right? And then the plants would get a little bigger. You would thin them out. You would trellis them down. You would get them a little further away from the light, dim it all the way. And you know what I mean? Like they just keep them a little further away from the light. And and by the way, I would just like to point out okay. that I know I didn't hear you say the light the first time. However, I would like to say I very much appreciate just how thorough your question was because you gave me the name of the rotation the amount of light the dimmable ballast in flower the fact that you were dimming it and had the intention to dim it that you had the 400 watt t5 and did that call did that answer your question oh yeah definitely okay. definitely because i was i was definitely worried about the plants getting burned okay all right then let me say thank you for the call 781 if you'll call back right now oh saved it the bowl just fell all right, so you see what I'm saying? Like, this is a matter of perspective. A 600 watt, two feet further away works like, you know what I mean? Pretty similar. And then you just spend a little more on electricity. What? You go, instead of a 400, you do 600. So you're spending 200 watts a month more plus the electricity to cool it. So that's all I'm suggesting is that was, uh, that was the relationship in that call. And he was really clear on the parts and pieces that he was using and the terminology to describe his setup. Now that's specifically what separates me from every other channel on YouTube that talks about growing cannabis because anybody can show you how to grow a plant. What I specifically want to impart upon you is the knowledge such that you can make these informed decisions that account for as many factors and coefficients and variables as possible, such that you're at the right RPM in the right gear when you make your turn. Bah, 804. All right, listen, 804, I want to take your call, but I'm, I'm waiting for 781. I'm hoping he'll call back. And if I just take your call, then I won't be. And then so I'm going to get a customer and they're like, for serious, that dog is not going to get up to uh, to open the door and sell him something. And since you guys get this show for free, that's where we're going to have to keep it. So, 781, what? You didn't, like, what? Did you go for, did you, did you leave for church? Like, was 1115 the cutoff? No, 804, damn it. No, nah, 804, I'm going to be strong. You got to wait till next week. ha <laughs> I'm going to have to open the store soon. I have to put all this stuff away. I'm clearly going to have to clean this bowl. I feel bad. Like we're all ending this waiting for 781. Bob, it's so high. It's so early and there's so much day left in today. Go boss, my shirt. Right. Listen, my dog, that dog, Ralph, knows like five commands. It's like, wait, get in, get out, stop barking. I mean, he doesn't need to, he doesn't need to know. Oh yeah, Chuck is, uh, uh, good for you, Chuck. Um, okay, so... I guess, uh, could be time to end the show with the music you all hate. Listen, I know I got like three quarters change of damn music. One quarter. I like the music. 
three quarters, like 50% say like more, more store stories, like 50% say no store stories. Bah, I can't win. But I can get high. I know, 781. Damn it, 781, I'm going to be wondering about that all week now. <laughs>